Hi, I'm Sean Gannon, and this is Minute Math, and today we're learning about solve quadratic equations by factoring. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help to use Minute Math. Okay, so the first thing we're going to start with here is with a definition about the zero product property and quadratic equations. The zero product property states, if a times b equals zero, then a equals zero or b equals zero, where a and b are real numbers or algebraic expressions. A quadratic equation is an equation containing a second degree polynomial. For example, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, where a, b, and c are real numbers and if a does not equal zero, it is in standard form. Okay. So those are, that's a basic idea of what a quadratic equation looks like. That ax squared plus bx plus c, you'll see it quite often. So let's go with an example where we have a leading coefficient of 1. Okay, So we're going to solve a quadratic equation, and our leading coefficient here is 1. So example 1 here. <clears throat> we have x squared plus x minus 6 equals 0. Okay. So what they want us to do here is we look at the b value and the c value. Remember, it's ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. And we look at the b value, and the b value here is 1, and the c value is equal to negative 6. So we need to ask ourselves this question. What two numbers, okay, what two numbers when we add them together equal 1, but multiply them to be a negative 6, okay? And I can see the multiplication like this is a little less confusing, okay? So what two numbers add to be 1, but multiply to be negative 6? So I like to make a list of the two numbers that multiply to be negative 6. So our two numbers we have are, some, we have what, 2 and negative 3, negative 2 and positive 3, okay? Um, and then we have, what is it, 1 and 6? So 1 and negative 6, and then negative 1 and positive 6, and I don't see any other ones that I can do. So, out of these two numbers, right, when we add them together, which one equals 1, okay? And hopefully, we can see here that negative 2 plus 3 is a positive 1. So if I switch that to a positive, right, negative 2 plus 3 is a positive 1, and that's what we're looking for, okay? So our two numbers here are negative 2 and positive 3 that we're going to be dealing with, all right? So, continuing with this, we then have a, we take these numbers and say, okay, x minus 2, because it's a minus 2, times x plus a 3 equals 0, and that's how we can factor this up here. Now, they tell us here now we want to solve by factoring, right? So, we can set each part equal to 0, so we have x minus 2 equals 0, and x plus 3 equal to 0. And now we want to solve, so we add a 2 to both sides, and x equals a positive 2, subtract a 3 to both sides, x equals a negative 3. And so our two solutions here are 2 and negative 3 for x. And you might want to write the negative first, but that's all right. So our two solutions here are uh, 2 and negative 3 for this one, okay? All right, let's do another one, number 2. Let's do this, solve this by factoring x squared plus 8x plus 15 equals 0. Well, the same property applies. We're going to look at the c value, okay? So we have our b value equals 1, uh, one 8. Let me erase that there. Getting ahead of myself here. Just thinking about the factors of 15. All right. So our b value equals 8, and our c value equals 15. So we're going to look, again, what multiplies to be 15 here. So we're looking at 15. Well, we have 1 times 15, or 15 times 1, but order doesn't really matter there for multiplication there, right? Uh, 3 times 5 works, right? 3 times 5. Um, hmm. Oh, here's another one. What about negative 1 times a negative 15? We can take the first part. If we both make them negative, Right? They multiply to be a positive 15. So same thing with negative 3 times negative 5. Okay. Now which one of these adds up to be 8? 
Hopefully you can see three and five. Three plus five equals eight. So the two numbers that we're looking for are three and five. So we can factor this to be x plus three and x plus five equals eight. Oh, <laughs> equals zero again, man. I'm getting all the typos here. Equals zero, because we're setting equal to zero. Remember this is coming down here. Now we can set both parts equal to zero. x plus three equals zero and x plus five equals zero. Subtract three to both sides, x equals a negative three. Subtract five to both sides, x equals a negative five. And so our two numbers are x equals a negative five comma negative three. Switch around the order. And there we have our two values here. Okay. All right. So I'm going to erase this and then we're going to get back to some more examples here. So bear with me. All right, let's go solve another one here, and we're going to use the zero product property. We have x squared minus 9 equals 0. So what's tricky about this is they don't really tell us specifically what the b value is. b value isn't really written there, and so our b is actually equal to 0. You can see if we have a 0 times x, it'd just be 0. We wouldn't write it. Our c value is a negative 9, so this one still just like the other ones, let's find the two numbers that multiply to be negative 9. All right. So two numbers that multiply to be negative 9, well, you have, was it negative 1 and positive 9? Or 1 and negative 9. Okay? What about 3s? We have 3 and a negative 3. Or we can flip around and have negative 3 times 3, but it's essentially the same thing, right? Um, nothing else, really, right? So, which one adds to be 0? Well, that's going to be 3 and negative 3, right? So our two numbers are positive 3 and negative 3. So we have x minus 3 times x plus 3 equals 0, right? The minus 3 and positive 3 flipped around by accident, sorry. Then we set both parts equal to 0. x minus 3 equals 0, and x plus 3 equals 0. From there, <clears throat> we add a 3 to both sides here, x equals positive 3 and x equals negative 3. And so our two answers are negative 3 and positive 3 for x. Well, that wasn't too bad, right? Not too bad here. So let's go dive into another example here, and we're going to be using uh, grouping, okay? So number 4, we have 4x squared plus 15x plus 9 equals 0, okay? Now this one's tricky. What's the first thing we notice? a is not 1, it's 4 here, okay? So what we want to do is multiply a times c. So we take a times our c value, okay? We're going to multiply those together, all right? And in doing so, we can see that, well, a is 4, c is 9, and together they multiply to be 36. So now we're going to find the factors of 36. Okay, so 36 is 1 times 36, 2 times 18, 3 times 12, 4 times 9, and 6 times 6. So we've got all of them there, okay, and we want to see which one of these sums, okay, which one of these sums adds up to be 15. Okay, so which one of these adds to be 15? All right, and well, it's this one, right? 3 and 12. So we have 3 and 12 here. They add up to be 15. So those are the two numbers that we're going to use here. Okay, now this factor by grouping is a little different than before, right? So kind of see what we're doing. Multiply the a value times the c value, got 36, and that's what we found the factors of. We found those numbers added to be 15, all right? Which two added to be 15? And those are two that we're going to use, okay? So we have two way we have a uh, we look at how we can write this here. Okay, so let me go rewrite this right here, the four x squared plus fifteen x plus nine down here equals zero. So we kind of can more easily see what's going on. Okay. So what we're going to do now is replace the fifteen x term, the b value term, with these two numbers that we were dealing with, 
okay, with the a value. So we'll, we'll see here, right? So we have 4x squared plus, instead of 15x, we're going to write this as 3x plus 12x equals, oh, sorry, uh, plus 9. <laughs> Don't forget that. Plus 9 equals 0. So hopefully you can see that this 15x, we're replacing that bx with these two values, but the same thing. We haven't changed this, okay? Now what we're going to do is pull out of an x here, and, uh, yeah, pull out of an x here. So we pull out the x, and we're left with 4x plus 3 here, plus, and this one, right, this one we're going to see what we can pull out, what common of the second part we can pull out. Well, 12x and 9 both have a 3 in it. So we can pull out a 3 here, and notice we have 4x plus 3, okay? So notice we have a double of this 4x plus 3 here, okay? So what I kind of did was I rearranged it, or put this down here, separated the 15x up, but did it smart by finding these values here, and that allowed me to pull out an x here to have 4x plus 3, and a 3 here to have 4x plus 3. Notice the repeat of the 4x plus 3. So we're going to pull out a 4x plus 3 from both parts here, And then we have x plus 3 left over, this x and this 3. Then from there, oh, not multi it's multiplication here. See, I always do stuff like that. Hey, it's all right. We all make little mistakes. It's all good. So now I can set each part equal to 0. So I'll do that up here so we have a little more room. So we have 4x plus 3 equal to 0 and x plus 3 equal to 0. Solve each one individually. Subtract 3 to both sides. 4x equals a negative 3. And x equals a negative 3 here. Divide both sides by 4. We have x equals a negative 4 thirds. And we have the other one that's already right here. Right? A negative 3. So our two numbers are negative 3 and a negative 4 thirds. And now we have solved this quadratic equation by using factoring. And this one by grouping. Okay? We're going to go through one more example here, uh, so bear with me. Let me go erase this, and we'll start over. So now we're going to try another example here. Let's go with number five. And this one's kind of a doozy. Negative 3x to the third power minus 5x squared minus 2x equals 0. And we have a higher degree polynomial here, okay? So notice we have x to the third power, then x squared, then x, okay? Well, first we'll see, can we kind of make this look like a quadratic? There's a value that's in all three of these that I see, and that's an x, right? So if I pull out, and I'm going to actually pull out a negative x, because I like my leading coefficient to be, in a sense, positive. So we pull out a negative x here. We're left with a positive 3x squared plus 5x plus 2, okay, equals 0. All right, so notice that we pull out a negative x, so we have a negative x that's out there being multiplied to this whole inside. So just like we did before, let's kind of, let's work on this 3x squared plus 5x plus 2 on its own here. All right, let's multiply 3 times 2. The a and c value, 3 times 2, that equals 6, right? So that's a times c, right? And so what we want to do now is see what, what are our factors of 6. Well, we have the option of, hmm, factors of 6. Well, <laughs> three, uh, 3 times 2, right? <laughs> so 3 times 2, or negative 3 times a negative 2, right? And then we have 1 times 6, or negative 1 times a negative 6. That's my options. All right. Well, which ones add to be a positive 5? And notice it's really the first one. We have 3 plus 2 equals a positive 5. B value, so our two values here we're looking at are 3 and 2. So we rewrite this, 3x squared plus, okay, plus, let's go 3x plus 2x plus 2 equals 0. So notice again, 3x plus 2x replaces this 5x right there. Now let's see what we can pull out. Okay? 
we pull out here, we can pull out a uh, 3x. So we pull out a 3x here of this fir these first two parts. We're left with x plus 1. Again here, if we pull out a 2, we're left with an x plus 1 as well. And that's what we're looking for, the x plus 1 here repeating. Okay, so we pull out an x plus 1 to both parts, x plus 1 comes out here, multiply, this 3x comes down, plus 2, so the 3x and the 2 are what's left over. Now we have x plus 1 times 3x plus 2 equals 0, same idea here, okay. Now I'm going to take this whole part here and replace it with what's inside there, okay. So we have a negative x here times x plus 1, 3x plus 2, and this whole thing is equal to 0. All right. <clears throat> well, really, this is just multiplication, right? So with our rules here, we can set all of these things equal to 0. This bracket doesn't have to be there, so if you want to see it like this, x times, or negative x times x plus 1, 3x plus 2, equals 0. So now, we have three values of three parts that we set equal to zero. Negative x equals zero, x plus one equals zero, and three x plus two equal to zero. Well, x equals zero, or negative x equals zero, meaning just x equals zero. We subtract one to both sides, x equals a negative one. Subtract two to both sides here, three x equals a negative two. Divide both sides by three, x equals a negative two thirds. And so our three solutions here are x equals 0, negative 1, and negative 2 thirds. And there we have our three solutions for this quadratic right here. So I hope you learned something here on how to solve quadratic equations by factoring. If you did, please like this video and subscribe to this YouTube channel. This helps us make more free math lessons for you. And as always, thanks for watching. Minute math, minute math, when you need help you use minute math. Minute math, minute math, when you need help you use minute math. Minutemathtutor.com